Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Good afternoon. Yeah. Sorry, we are moving anyway from uh, LinkedIn, where we had a temporary glitch to this platform, Zoom. And um, the idea is, you know, uh, that's my really first time on the LinkedIn live stream. So yeah, I'm going to learn from it. Um, straight away, the, I, the concern about this subject, uh, setting behavioral indicators for your project actually comes because of the different uh, challenges we are seeing in the field, where, uh, for example, when we have immigration, uh, sorry, immunization programs, you see that there's a general target for the immunization program. There's an indicator, and that general target for immunization, which is, for example, they want to have 95% coverage, that is vaccination of the people and they consider that a success. But for that to be a success, it's not just by providing vaccines or bringing them close to the people. It is that when you've provided the vaccine, when you have built the health center, when you've trained the health workers, people need to know when to come to the point of vaccination. People need to be willing to come People need to come and be willing to stay and do the right things and accept the immunization. They also need to know what to do after immunization, maybe in case of adverse events. These are all the areas where communication comes in. But often the communication practitioners, the development communication practitioners do not set their own indicators that show that we're moving towards the desired behaviors that will allow for the immunization coverage to happen. And it is this challenge, the absence of us, these behavioral indicators on our own part, that then makes it easy to blame communication for the failure of any project. So if there's a failure, the quick thing is say, well, people were not aware. You know, people, there wasn't adequate knowledge. The,
there are objectives. I said there are five steps. One is to identify the
really um, capture their own indicators. So if um, you are communicating to get people to bring their children over. Okay, Kachi, Kachi, you raise the hand. Hello, can you hear yes. me now? Yes, clearly. The network itself has also had to um, speak. So um, okay. you're actually going to what, um, what I wanted to say, that um, from my experience over this um, past few years, has made me to understand the importance of having a communication strategy or a campaign strategy different from that of the project. So by the time, like you were mentioning in the beginning, by the time you already know the project goal, it's now left for to sit down and strategize. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll be doing um, 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 communicators do, uh, NGOs do just, you know, use um, newspaper, do, um, press briefing, do whatever it is, and just and say they communicated. And at the end of the day, they miss out. But by the time you sit down to plan, to strategize, yeah. you'll be able to pick out the main people you're supposed to pass across this message to, and then yeah. people you're expecting the change from. So it helps. It, it... Oh, network. But I get your point. You're saying it helps. Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. Now you're back. Oh, okay. I don't know. When did I stop? <laughs> yeah. You, you were saying that it helps us, you know, if we have our own communication strategy, something like that. And then each individual project. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's why most times it fails and then they begin to wonder and blame the communication team. Sometimes, yes, it's the blame should be at their, at their doorstep. Sometimes, no. But most times I've realized over the years, when they, oh, there's a project on oh, need communications, oh, newspaper, um, LinkedIn, Twitter. Again, mm -hmm. they expect to be different audience. Yeah. So it's important to know your participants, to know the people you're trying to communicate that change to, and then yes. you now strategize what is the best way to get across to them. Exactly, exactly. Thank you so much. Yes, that's, welcome Busayo. Busayo is just joining. Sorry for taking us all the way to LinkedIn and then we're back here. Um, so yes, you're right. Um, it's important to have our strategy uh, in place. And in fact, that's why these behavioral indicators are important. Because in our own communication strategy, aside from the project strategy or project work plan, we will then identify what are the behaviors and what are the things that indicate that the behaviors are changing. And then we make sure we measure them regularly. In the case of this immunization that I talked about, if we our mobilizers go what used to go house to house, they gave tally cards to people. So if we talk to you and you are favorably disposed to bring your bring your children to for immunization, we give you a card, just a small piece of paper we wrote on it, and then somebody signed, just a normal piece of paper. But you have to keep that piece of paper and arrive at the health center with it. When you arrive at the health center, our mobilizers again are there on that day and they ask you for the tally card. So they pick up the tally card from you right at the health center. And now for us, that already tells us that we were able to get people from their homes to come with their children for vaccination. If, ve if vehicles broke down and you didn't bring the vaccine or the cold chain equipment broke down, there was no light and vaccines got spoiled and people didn't get vaccinated. And then you did not get 95% coverage of the vaccine. 
of the, that is 95 percent of the population were not vaccinated that failure is no longer because communication failed the failure was squarely our, around your logistics around your project management but we're able to show that this household we gave number one, this other household we gave number two, and it had a child called this person. And at the venue of the vaccination point, at the vaccination point, they turned up at 9 a.m. where we gave them, and there was nobody till 12 noon, and they turned back. So communication people should be able to identify what are the communication uh, objectives, and what are the indicators that you are making progress towards achieving those objectives? And then we should be able to show that progress that we're making. So I had already shared this slide, you know, since we started late, I will just not dwell again on this again, which is that the behavior continuum is from people getting knowledge, getting a positive disposition towards that uh, course of action, and then actually taking the action itself. And we can measure at these different levels. We can measure whether there's an increase in awareness or the in increase in knowledge. If we have supplied um, a solar powered borehole, do people know how to use this borehole so that they will get clean water? Are people favorably disposed to going to uh, get this water from the borehole or do they prefer the stream that is nearby? What's their feeling? What's their attitude? Even if their feeling is good, do they feel that the queue is so long so they don't actually go to fetch this water? Or according to cultural norms, maybe they feel that the borehole is good, but you are mixing women and men at the borehole place and men are touching women and all of that and culturally they don't want so they don't actually go there we know how to use the borehole we are favorable disposed towards going there but in the behavioral part which we realize that we cannot go there because of certain things so we as behavior change people need to know I have listed here some examples of things that can be part of your indicator. So indicator can be in terms of absolute numbers that you want to change. So how many community members at the end of your communication exercise, how many community members should now be able to wash their hands before maybe important things like eating, important things like they want to take medicine, important things like they want to touch money or after they touch money. How many community members now know, maybe because of a survey you did at, as a baseline and a survey you, con you continue to conduct periodically, do you now see an increase? Uh, how many number of fathers are refusing to give out their children for early marriage if they have not finished school? So these are absolute numbers you can count in, in your community. But you can also do proportion. Proportion, percentage of girl children who are now finishing school. Or the, num the percentage of children, reduction in the, num in the percentage of children that now drop out of school. Now, these are different ways that you can set those indicators. So having behavioral indicators enables you to focus, you know, focus your communication. Therefore, you reduce wastage because you know exactly what you want to change and you are acting on those things exactly. And then you can capture exactly what you need to tell that story. So it is a great development communication tool. And in my conclusion, I would say that for us as development communicators, we need to learn to put value to our development communication efforts. And then we need to show that value. We need to show what we brought to the table for the amount. Because if you notice, whenever there is a need to cut the budget, it's communication they are going to come for immediately because people think it's a waste of time. And they are not the ones to be blamed. It's us who 
are not capturing the changes we are making and we are not sharing it. So we should show it and then we should share it. And that's where I'll stop for now after having taken so much time. So I can take some comments and then we close. But we're going to be doing this uh, a bit more regularly. It might be weekly, it might be uh, fortnightly, depending on what we say. It might be twice a month, it might be. Yes. Any comment? Any question? Okay. Uh, hello. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, for me, I want to express uh, appreciation for for this very innovative uh, idea that you have uh, brought up. As always, I know you to be a man of ideas. So. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, I'm not gonna miss this one, I'm not gonna miss this one. <laughs> and uh, it's always a privilege uh, and an exciting experience uh, uh, listening to you talk about uh, development communication. And I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. yes. And I enjoyed my I enjoyed this uh, moment. I was afraid I would miss out, but luckily for me, I was able to 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 get what I have gotten. I don't know. Are you? Is it possible? Are you going to give us this slide? Yeah, I'm likely to, and I'm going to share the recording. Um, so, because when I saw that we are having to move this way, I said, okay, maybe we should record it to be able to okay. share with all those who indicated interest. So, so I will Example. share it. Um, uh, somebody can like use the recording. If it's yeah. okay, maybe at, at a workshop or something. Yeah, it's okay. If it's I mean, I can even share this slide. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you so much for at least making it over despite the short notice. We're going to make it regular, like I said. Um, I, I want to keep it on LinkedIn. Um, the, the, so we'll, we'll get to that subsequently. All right, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you so to, much. Yes. So I apologize once again. So when I share the link of the, to the recording, we can share with the colleagues who, whom we invited and let's yeah. see what we can make of it. All right, thank you okay. so much. All right, thanks. Thanks everyone and uh, do have a lovely week ahead. Uh, it's inauguration tomorrow. Be careful how you go out. Um, but we pray everything will go smoothly. All right. All right. And bye.